Hello? Hello? The heading is there. Yes, I, I, I had first opened the heading, then I later opened. Okay. Uh, we are going to look at Oman rule at the East African coast, and uh, it is between 1740 to 1840. And uh, that's the period we are going to be handling for us to be in the know of what Oman rule comprised of and how they got interested into the East African coast. Uh, as we are focused on this, initially we looked at the Portuguese at the East African coast, and then we look at the Arabs at the East African coast. So in 1965, we talk about a competition or a rivalry that existed between the Portuguese and the coastal Arabs. And what was the competition about? It was all about who should have control of the East African coast. After the final defeat of the Portuguese at the coast, the Arabs in Mombasa requested uh, for the leadership in Oman for assistance against the Arabs that is around 1698. Um, these are two communities we are going to handle, and it is these two communities that are going to help us understand what you people will later come to know about as uh, the struggle along the East African coast. So imams, these were legitimate leaders of Oman in Arabia, and for us to be able to know who these people were, we talk about the two families that were in leadership in Oman around the 16th and the 17th century. And these included the Yarubi and the Busaidi families. So before the Portuguese, the Arabs had been involved in the trade. I hope you remember the Indian Ocean trade or the coastal trade. And so the life of the people along the East African coast here had changed completely for over many centuries. Uh, when we get to the next slide. Next slide. We but are going to see, next slide, please. It is this one that I've, this, I've, I've, I've the shown. The next one, next one, this one is done. So when we have the Arabs at the coast, our life along the East African coast will have to change. And later when we have the Portuguese come, that's when we have everything turned upside down. So the Arabs, in order to control the East African trade at the East African coast, more effectively, what happened? Uh, within the two families that were in Oman, we shall have the Yarubi uh, who will appoint the Mazri to come and lead the East African coast on their behalf. Mazri were a representation or were representatives of the one family in Oman who was in leadership then, and those that were none other than the Yarubi. However, as time went on, in the second half of the 19th century, the Arabi family had conflict and it was overthrown by the Busaidi family in Oman. Let's not forget, we are talking about Oman leadership uh, and we have it extend. When we are discussing Oman, we are focused on that great, great empire that would stretch as far as the Indian far, far in the far east. So the two families that were in leadership, each would lead at a given time. I'll just give you a scenario of probably what happened in our neighboring countries within Rwanda, where we have two tribes, the Tusi and the Hutu. Uh, uh, the Hutu and the, and the Tusi, the two tribes in Rwanda. Now, for the case of Oman, we are focused on two families, the Yarubi and the Bseidi. 
But in the time that the Yorubi and leadership, they have their representation along the East African coast, and these were none other than the Masri. So when conflict started in Oman, the two families fought each other, and so the Yorubi were defeated. So leadership of Oman therefore came under a new family who are now the Busaidi. Consequently, the Masri, who are now the ambassadors that had been appointed by uh, the Yarubi uh, as leadership or as legitimate leaders along the East African coast here, refused to recognize the new leadership in Oman. And what did they say? That's when we shall have the governor, Muhammad ibn Uthman al Mazri saying, the new leader is an ordinary citizen like myself. He has taken power in Oman. I have taken power in Mombasa. And this did not go well with a new family that had come to leadership. That is the Busaidi. It was more of a provocation that eventually led to what will come to be known as the Busaidi and Masri struggle along the East African coast. So this is what we are discussing, and that's a brief background. We'll talk about how we handle the Masri and Busaidi struggle along the East African coast. All this started with two families uh, the Yarubi and the Busaidi. When Yarubi time came to an end, the Busaidi uh, were now the new leaders, but because the Masri had been a representation of the Yarubi along the East African coast, they did not recognize the new leadership. And it is that that sparked off the East African conflict that we talk about as the Busaidi Masri struggle or the Busaidi Masri conflict. And the conflict is about who should be in the leadership at the East African coast. Just like Uganda would have an ambassador, let's say in Kenya, and once government changes, then the ambassador in Kenya says, you who has taken over power in Uganda, you're just an ordinary person. You lead in Uganda, I'll also lead in Kenya at the embassy. And that is not something that is good to the new leadership that wants to prove it has full control. Can we go to the next slide? Don't they have a question before to the next setting? Uh, okay, I see Jovia. Jovia's hand is up. Unmute yourself and then. So, was a Yerubi neutral or were they under the Mazri? What? Were they neutral for both the Bissaidi and the Mazri or were they under the Mazri? The Yerubi and Busaidi are the two families that we talk about in Oman. When the Yerubi are in leadership, they appoint the Masri to represent them at the East African coast, especially at a time when we have trade moving on. So the Yerubi were not neutral. They were at once in leadership, but with a representation when government changes, the representatives do not recognize the new family. And the new family is what would spark off what came to be known as the Masri and Busaidi struggle. Okay. Uh, I don't seem to see this, this upper, upper heading. Eh? Okay, that is better. Now, can we bring it down a little bit? Why the open Arabs wish to control East African coasts? Why the Oman Arabs wished to control the East African coast? 
And as we handle this, we are focused on the new leadership. It is that new leadership that would want us to focus on. It's a general, general perception of the entire Oman leadership wanting to control the East African coast. And so when the Busaidi take lead, they will still have the same interests. And it is this that we give reasons for their desire to control the East African coast. Politically, Oman Arabs wanted to exercise their political power. Uh, exercising political power, how? By imposing themselves as the rulers at the East African coast. So it is the desire, uh, the feel, the want to show that they have it all as far as the political power was concerned. So they decided to impose themselves as leaders. Two, Oman Arabs wanted to impose taxes. You know where there are taxes, then there's revenue coming in, which revenue can be used in the administration uh, sector of any country. So their desire was to impose the taxes as to get revenue or as to generate revenue. Oman Arabs also wanted to rule the East African coast as a compensation, compensating them for what? These are Arabs that had participated in the overthrow of the Portuguese. We know that the 200 years of Portuguese rule along the East African coast, uh, a given percentage, the biggest percentage had ruined the environment, the political, economic, and social living along the East African coast. But because the Arabs from Oman had participated, they felt they needed to be compensated for the help given, for the assistance given to the coastal people in defeating the Portuguese. Why else did this happen that they were interested in uh, controlling the uh, uh, the East African coast, it is because uh, the East African coast was free from conflicts. And as we handle the conflicts here, we stretch back to the two families that had conflicted over leadership. When the Busaidi overthrew the Yarobi in Oman. So they felt it is better to come at the East African coast because of the environment that's uh, proved to be suitable with the absence of conflict that were back home. And the other reason as to why uh, there was that desire to control the East African coast was because they wanted to control or to make sure that the Portuguese did not return. We, on many occasions, tend to forgive but it is very hard to forget. So they felt if they were not at the cost, this would give room for the once defeated Portuguese to return. And their return, if they happened to return, it would be something that would be worse than when they were in existence. So they decided to stop them forever, not to return at the East African coast, especially when we talk about 1778, where the Portuguese had tried to recapture Fort Jesus. I hope you know what Fort Jesus was, a fortress that had been constructed by the Portuguese to help them monitor, uh, monitor the East African coast. The other reason for their interest a uh, manly uh, interest in controlling East African coast was because Mombasa, which was under Masri, who were the Arabs, had turned out to be rebellious. When does this happen? When we have Uthman al Masri been provoking the new leadership, failing to recognize the Busaidi as new leaders in Oman. So they thought. If she had turned out to be rebellious, then there was need to come and tame her as soon as possible so that she does not instigate other towns. And the other was economic reasons and the economic here, the first one was their desire to gain the control of the profitable 
Indian Ocean trade. Uh, gold was high on demand. Up to now, gold has remained up there among the precious item mineral. So the gold wealth in Kira is what made them feel they should come and have a share of what they were earning from the Indian Ocean trade. And the next reason was because of the coastal climate, which proved to be more favorable compared to the one in Oman. So here, when you are discussing the climate here, uh, it's proved to be more suitable compared to the one in Oman. You know, Oman, uh, uh, things have just changed today. And as we discuss Oman, you've had many of our citizens going as far as in those countries to work because things have changed with the advancement in science and technology. But back in those days, we are looking at the coastal climate having been favorable for agriculture compared to the arid conditions in Oman. Uh, then we discuss the other reason as that they desired to effectively exploit the cheap slave labor at the cost, as they did not want to use fellow Muslims as workers. It is that that probably could have pushed them to have the urge to come and have control of the East African coast. And the next slide. Socially, it's because they wanted to strengthen and spread what? Islam, eh? the new, yes. their uh, uh, Islamic as a religion. They thought everybody should be Islamized, eh? they become a Muslim and follow uh, their doctrines. So they thought if they would get to the East African coast, then there would be that strength to have it spread. And the last one was to maintain the culture and social ties with the Muslim brothers at the cost. We know that uh, the cost had been dominated by the Arabs and there was a lot in common that leadership in Oman felt if they got it here, then it would be maintained. And it is this that would help them feel at home as East or West home is best and birds of the same feathers here would be flocking together because of that cultural and social ties. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Before they ask. Are there uh, questions to ask about why Oman leadership picked interest in the East African cost or their desire to control the East African cost. Is there anything you'd want us to throw more light on? Probably if I'm to sum it up in a, a few, a few, a few uh, sentences, you just break it into political, social and economic reasons. If that fails and the question is why, then give them as general, just write them as they, you might be recalling them. It is those that will help you raise as many points as possible. I know if you happen to break them down, then it might be confusing. Is there any, uh, any observation you'd want us to throw more light on before I continue on something else of the conflicts along the East African coast? Yes, I see your hand up, Faith. Um, teacher, one of the points you've given us says that Oman Arabs wanted to control the coast to make sure that the Portuguese did not return. For example, in mm. 1778, the Portuguese tried to recapture Fort Jesus, which scared the Oman Arabs. So I wanted mm. to ask, why were the Portuguese easily defeated by these Oman Arabs to take the coast again? Why did the Arabs take the coast back from the Portuguese, were the Portuguese like less efficient in their administration or did the Oman Arabs have more powerful weapons and fighting tactics than the Portuguese? Now the 
Arabs at the coast were now fully established. That's the first point. Then two, uh, they say experience is the best teacher. Many people had seen the leadership of the Portuguese and so they never desired to have it again. When they saw the Arabs coming in, probably they knew these were now the savior of the condition. Sure. Besides, hello? Besides, uh, they had already captured Fort Jesus and Fort Jesus, if you had been at the course, if you've moved as far as Mombasa, you would see how strategic it was. So it is not something they would just let go. They would have to sweat for it with all that was at their disposal. So the Arabs were more, more determined come what may not to have these Portuguese return at the East African coast. Any other observation? Yes, Grace. Um, you said that um, the Arabs in Mombasa requested for the Oman Arab assistance against Portugal. Now, sorry mm. for the help from those guys. Where were they from? I'm getting a feedback, so I haven't heard most of the words you're saying. Eh? I'm getting a lot of feedback from you. Can you say your question again? Requested for Oman Arabs against the What's the question? And there are people near you that are making noise. Can I have somebody else ask? Thank you, Sorry. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, I was asking that um, the Arabs in Mombasa asked the Oman to help against the Portuguese. Where were these Arabs from the ones who were in Mombasa before? I thought they were also from Oman. Yeah, you see the Arabs at the coast here. We have just been looking at. I think in S1, you looked at Indian Ocean trade, if you remember that, and then you saw the coming of the Arabs, where we discussed that the Arabs had come initially first, not to stay, but because of the trade and uh, the presence of the trade items, later we shall have them come into the East African interior. And now they are stay at the coast. These were just few people or few Arabs that had been already at the coast who needed reinforcement at the time they are attacked by the Portuguese. So when the Portuguese come and attack them, the Arabs already established themselves and they had turned out to be prosperous in their trade activities. When they realize that they are losing it with the coming of the Portuguese, then they seek for assistance for more Arabs, Arab assistance from Oman. And so they are getting the other assistance from nowhere other than Oman. Have I answered you, please? Yes, teacher, thank you. Okay. Can we focus on something, uh, something else? If there is no more... Uh, observation you would want me to make. Can I proceed? Teacher, teacher Resty. Hello. 
dexterity. Okay, uh, in the next one, we are going to look at uh, the Busaidi Masri conflict and would want to see how and how long it took. So we are focused at the time. We need to know the time frame and we need to know the major events that are cutting across in this conflict. Uh, in 1698, we have Port Jesus that fell in the hands of the Oman Arabs, having just the Portuguese away. In 1741, a conflict arose between the Busaidi and Masri. And that's the time we would look at that the Busaidi were Arabs from Oman, who are the new family of leadership or in leadership in Oman. And so where does the conflict now come in? It comes in when the ambassadors who initially had been appointed by the Yorubi fail to recognize the new family who were none other than the Busaidi. So 1741, a conflict arose between, between, um, between the Busaidi and Masri, and the Busaidi were Arabs from Oman, while the Masri were the coastal Arabs who are mainly settled in Mombasa. That's when we talk about uh, the pronunciation by, or the pronouncement by uh, Uthman Muhammad al Masri failing to recognize the Busaidi new leadership in Oman. That's the conflict I'm talking about. Can we get down, please? Hello. The screen is up and down, up and down, and I'd want to follow the screen myself when I'm explaining. Eh? I think it, Michael. Then let me just have it when it is settled. Eh? Okay. Now, seeing it after the introduction, uh, you're going to the causes of the Busaid Masri conflicts. I sing it then. Yes. I'm seeing the causes. Huh? Yes, there then was an opening statement of the Busaid Mazuri conflicts. Now here mm -hmm. the causes of the Busaid Mazuri conflicts then. Okay. Yes, Sebo. Okay. Now uh, dear girls, let's get back to what I've been discussing. And here I would want to see now the two families, rather the two parties conflicting. Busaidi is the new leadership in Oman, and then Masri were the once legitimate leaders that had been appointed by the Yarubi. But it is this conflict that we are discussing that would want to give reasons for its occurrence. And the heading there is causes of the conflict between the Busaidi and Masri. Let's not forget, Masri are at the East African coast, but then the Busaidi is the new family in Oman that had taken over power. So what made them to conflict? One, the desire to control the East African trade. And East African trade here, we are talking about gold and ivory that were found in Kira and Sofara. So the Arabs wanted to dominate these two towns in order to impose the taxes. They wanted to have control of these towns in order to impose the taxes. These are two points in one. One is desire to control the East African trade. And as you discuss the East African trade, focus on gold and ivory. Then two, 
their desire to impose taxes having controlled these once powerful coastal towns, which is or which were Kira and Sofara. Both, as we discuss both, we are looking at the Busaidi and Masri. Both of them feared that the Portuguese would come back and then take control of the East African coast. And in case this happened, then they would be overthrown out. So it is that fear that would lead to a conflict. As the Masri are struggling to defend themselves, the Busaidi are also saying the Portuguese must not return. It is that that would force them to conflict or to fight as each is desiring to have overall leadership, overall power along the East African coast. In the next one, we are looking at the Dutch, the French, the British traders that had invaded the Indian Ocean. And here, what had made them invade it, it is because of the prosperous trade that was going on. So when the vigorous, the vigorously involved in the trade, the Oman Arabs wanted to control these economic activities that were happening over the waters of the Indian Ocean. It is that that will lead to a conflict. Why? Busaidi Oman says we are the new leaders. The Masri at the East African coast also say they are legitimate leaders, but do not recognize the ones in Oman. Yet the one in Oman want to control these economic activities. You can't have two leaders within one community. There must be one at a time who is overall. So it is that that would cause a conflict between the Saidi and Masri. Why else the conflict? It is because uh, Oman Arabs wanted to keep law and order in the Indian Ocean trade, so as to benefit from the trade. How had this one come about? That's when you talk about the sea pirates who were interfering, who were threatening the ongoing trade activities. So because now new leadership wants to have it in its own hands, even the ones at the East African coast under the leadership of the Masri also feel they must help in maintaining or in keeping law and order. Then the Arabs had helped the coastal people against uh, the radicals or against the infidels. So they thought they were entitled to control the coast. And who are these radicals we are discussing about? These were none other than the Portuguese. We all remember the Portuguese leadership. Uh, the other reason is that the coastal towns wanted to remain independent. It is that that would lead to the conflict between the Masri and Busaidi, and which in particular coastal town desired to be independent. It was mainly Mombasa. Huh? If you ever forget other towns, just look at Mombasa with the declaration of their leader who failed to recognize the new leadership in Oman of the Busaidi family. Then still, the Masri governors here along the East African coast were harsh. Where do we observe their harshness? It is during the collection of taxes that made them become unpopular at the East African coast. Because this had been representation of Oman with a new government, it felt it, it was their duty to come and improve on their image. Talk about these uh, harsh methods that were involved in collection of taxes, which the Masri were objecting. Uh, the other one, or the other reason, is that the coastal towns were encouraged to rebel because they knew the weakness of the Saidi who are, for example, preoccupied with problems back home. Where do we see the problems? 
The problems had uh, continued reason being, they had not got a smooth landing. They had fought the worst Yarobi people who were in government. And so enmity went on and there was need to have it solved. As they were preoccupied with the challenges back home, we also look at the sea what pirates. Sea pirates are highway robbers we we'll talk about in the present society, but who are mainly on big waters. And as I discussed the big waters here, I'm looking at the oceans, I'm looking at the seas, people who are there to take advantage of the situation. So this kept on preoccupying the new government or the new leadership in Oman. And so the coastal people felt it is high time they rebelled in order to become independent. Mazri at the coast never liked the appointment of the Busage rulers. And I hope this one is now taking us back to that pronunciation by Muhammad Uthman al Mazri bin, saying, he who has taken over leadership in Oman is just an ordinary person. So even along the East African coast, I can be in the lead. And it is such a provocation that will eventually lead to the conflict. Uh, Masri governors were also proud and believed that Mombasa belonged to them and them alone before the coming of the world, the Portuguese. Belonging to the Masri governors, not the Busaidi. Why? Because the Masri had overstayed, having been a representation of the Yerubi, and they thought Mombasa was theirs and theirs alone. The Masri believed that the coast was theirs, and so they felt Busaidi should not interfere should not uh, help or should not come in to help in the administration. So they felt it is them to do all the administrative work with no supervision from the new government in Oman. And that was unacceptable by the Busaidi who felt they should have control. So it is these that are the ones that are helping us to understand how this Masri Busaidi conflict came into play. The Masri had gained a lot of confidence after defeating the Portuguese, and it is this that made them feel, come what may, they must have their control of the East African coast without any interference of the Busaidi. And then we have able leadership under uh, Sayyid Sayyid. Said Said is going to be a new personality we shall have to handle under this topic, and we shall see how effectively he manned the East African coast. So, with the presence of the able leadership, they were in position to have a conflict between Busaidi and Masri along the East African coast. Mm -hmm. The other causes for the conflict, we have Masri fighters who are assured of the support. Uh, United people stand and divided people fall. So they thought they had this support from the Nika, the Kamba. Remember, these are the ones that had helped a lot in long distance trade, in the trade that was along the East African coast. So they thought these are people they had established ties with and they would give them all the support and due to their early trade contacts, this helped them to strengthen their military capabilities. So when they realized that they have it all, there is no way they thought they would be overtaken over by the Busaidi. Then the other point is that uh, the 
Mazuri were united due to their strong element of what? Islam. Is this where Muslims treasure, where Muslims feel if it is any war against the other and it is in the name of religion, it can easily be fought to success. So religion helped to unite more of the Masri along the East African coast than back home where the Busaidi were disunited within them and the Yorubi family. Yes, so that, what that can we one. not hear? We can note causes and we can easily be able to highlight them. Normally they ask questions of explaining the causes between the Masri and the Busaidi along the East African coast. Please know Masri were at the coast while Busaidi had been the new leadership that had taken over power in a man that felt should have control of the East African coast as well. The Saudi Arabs were involved in the conflict back home in Oman, and so this gave little opportunity, or it gave uh, some opportunity to the Masri who wanted to exploit and gain their independence. This point takes us back to the problems that the new leadership in Oman was facing, and it is that that made them conflict feeling that they would not be given more attention. Note, when Said said he came to power, he managed to bring the coastal struggle to an end. To an end. So that is how far I can go for now, unless there are observations to make or clarifications you want me to make. Hmm. And you have discussed very well for me unless the girls have questions but what you have told them I feel it is just enough any point please any girls point? you'd want us to go more light on. Um, could you please put um, the recording of this lesson on your classroom? Because some people's signal is unstable, so it's mm. easier to watch the recording. Okay. It's even last time, last Mondays. Okay, uh, we shall follow it up and they put it there. If there is no, I request to stop here and then we shall continue from there next time. Yeah, next time. Can we have Thank a Thank you. Mm. Anyone to lead us into a closing prayer as we move out? Can I ask you? Yes, do. Father God, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for whatever we have learned. Let it be useful in the future. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. You're love. Thank you.
should I expect anything? Can a man sip? <clears throat> Don't sip. <laughs> Maybe precede. Ah, uh, you're the one who sips. <laughs> Kelly, you're not telling me the truth. What? It is the truth. Mm-hmm. Come on. I'm for real, believe me. <laughs> oh, Kelly, I know you. No, now we are. Tell me. Um, I so said, like, for it's nothing. Nothing, nothing. Mm. Sanyu, please tell me. <laughs> uh-huh. Sanyu. <laughs> Thank you. Can you help help Shana with some bullets? We didn't fire enough shots. <laughs> then I didn't fire enough shots. Mm. Yeah. I'm not even trying anything. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lesson is still being recorded. <laughs> help me, please. I want I won't even tell Kim. What? I won't even tell Kelly. I won't tell Adi. I won't tell anyone. Please tell me. What happened? What do you mean? Can what are you talking face. about? Please, can I show your face? Please, I'll show my face if Priscilla shows her face. <laughs> <laughs> You're dreaming. So if you want, I won't. Hmm. I love you. Can you leave me alone? Stop beating me. Uh, 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 uh. Don't keep quiet. Show me my face. I don't want. Show them my face. I don't want. They don't want to see your face. They do want. To they see don't me. want. Kelly has to text in class. Kelly has to text in class. <laughs> I, I relax. Okay, let me just go on. Let me face. Just the face. <laughs> And tell me. <laughs> then, yeah. Um, for Rachel. Good afternoon, teacher. Shauna. Yes. What is now? What? That's it. <laughs> the line me. Have a nice day. Can you show my face? Kelly, Kelly. Has the lesson ended? Yeah. Yes. Ended it's sometime. End. Yes. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. bye.
Can you stop lying me? <laughs> No, I'm not lying. Bye bye. 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 So now there's nothing to say now we are. <laughs> you tell me. Well, the person has refused to tell me. But there's nothing. I thought I don't talk to that person for <laughs> like for real, for real. And also. Yeah. You are talking to the non so. Uh, who are you? No, 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 no,